All righty, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thanks so much for joining me for this webinar today. My name is Jesse Bly and I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. I'm seeing so many familiar names come through for this webinar, so I'd like to thank you for your support, um, especially during these times. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us for this webinar. Um, I'm super excited for this webinar today because Kenya is one of my absolute favorite places in the entire world, and I really am missing it right now. So um, today we have Kath joining us all the way from Nairobi. She is the product manager for Kelly and Peacock Safaris, and although she's quite humble about her title, she works really, really hard in order to make sure that um, your guests are getting some of the best and most unique experiences. Um, it's her job to constantly research new activities and be out in the field um, so that your guests can get um, the most unique uh, experiences. So I hope that you'll jot down her contact information and utilize her for your future clients. Um, so what I wanted her to do today is go through the southeastern circuit of Kenya. Um, and before I hand everything over to her, I just wanted to briefly touch on the Emerging Destinations portfolio. Um, hopefully you guys are familiar with some of the products that we represent. So not only are we working with Kelly and Peacock, um, and their sister company is the Elawana Collection and Sky Safari by the Elawana Collection in Kenya and Tanzania. We also represent Eco Training Guides and Guardians in South Africa, as well as Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda. We have quite the extensive South America portfolio as well. Terra Nova can help you with absolutely anything in Costa Rica. We represent the Guyana Tourism Authority, uh, Hotel Las Torres, and Fantastico Sur in Torres del Paine National Park, Cruz Andino in the Lake District of Patagonia, and Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon. Then we've got Grand Hotels Lux in Argentina and Uruguay. Our polar portfolio consists of Adventure Canada that sails the Canadian Arctic um, and beyond. And then we also have Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel. So these are our cool companies and cool places. We're really happy to be working with them. Um, we have webinars coming up on almost every single one of these clients that you see here. So if you head over to the Emerging Destinations uh, website under news and learn you can click our webinars and sign up for those future webinars that we have with these clients um, again before I get started just a few housekeeping notes I am recording this webinar so if you have to jump out for a call a meal something like that no worries I'll be sending you all a follow-up with the recording also please feel free to type through questions um, we would love to get to those at the end of the webinar or if we don't have any time um, after this webinar, so please type those through. You can do that on the GoToWebinar control panel. So without further ado, I'm going to hand everything over to Kath and let her take us through Kenya's Southeastern Circuit. Uh, thank you so much, Jesse. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Kelly and Peacock Safari's webinar on Kenya's Southern Safari Circuit which is Amboseli, Savo, and Shudu Hill. Just a brief rundown, Kelly and Peacock is a, a destination management company. We've been in operation since 1985, so we turned 35 this year. Um, we operate in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda. We have offices in Kenya and Tanzania. Um, we specialize in exclusive and bespoke safaris. And in Kenya, we operate flying safaris mainly, um, utilizing local airlines and lodges. In Tanzania, we have our own road fleet um, of safari vehicles, so we do road safaris there. Uganda and Rwanda are also road and flying. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm the product manager. I am based in Nairobi, but I have the amazing job of being able to go out and visit all of the lodges that we promote and all the safari areas. Um, I am a bit of a workaholic, so I am available on WhatsApp at all times and Skype as well. And you can email me any questions whenever you need. I am here to help. So um, the Ken Kenya Southern Safari Circuit is made up of four national parks, Amboseli, Chulu Hills, Savo East and Savo West. Um, these are all national parks, which means that they are all owned by the Kenya Wildlife Services. You'll hear me talk about national parks and conservancies. The difference is um, conservancies are either community owned 
or privately owned. Um, they provide uh, additional activities, whereas in the national park, you are limited to game drives and staying on the roads. In conservancies, you can drive off-road and they offer activities such as night drives, bushwalks, horse riding. And they also play an incredible role in keeping the community involved in wildlife conservation, as all conservancy fees go directly to the community. These four areas, um, they all make up the greater Savo and Abiceli ecosystem, and they're all renowned for their amazing views of Kilimanjaro, which, yes, it's very beautiful, but it also plays a very a vital role for the ecosystems, as uh, the permanent springs and swamps within the areas are all fed by the rainwater and snowmelt from the mountain. The majority of the year, all these areas are semi-arid, so the wildlife is sustained by these swamps and springs. Starting with Amboseli, you'll see that uh, the national park is outlined here, but it is bordered by numerous conservancies, um, the main one being Kiturua Conservancy. Um, Amboseli is a small park. It's only 400 kilometers squares, squared, and it used to be a huge prehistoric lake. Um, now it's home to permanent swamps, and these, as I mentioned, attract wildlife year round, but also in times of drought, um, they can they can be the only water source available, attracting elephants, wildebeest, and zebra in their hundreds. Amboseli is renowned for its large for the, having the largest tuskers in Africa, and with Kilimanjaro as a backdrop, it is a photographer's dream. During the rains, uh, the wildlife tends to spread out, but there is a thriving resident predator population, along with elephants and spectacular bird life because of the vast amount of water in the springs and swamps. Um, they are prominent throughout the year, so it is a year-round destination and weirdly the views of Kilimanjaro are the best during the rainy season. In Kenya, the peak safari seasons is usually in the dry months between June to October. We have our short rains in November and our long rains in April and May. Um, whilst the safari seasons peak in June and October, as well as December, the rainy season is an incredible time to come on safari with usually less vehicles around and everything is green and lush and the wildlife is flourishing. Back to Amboseli. Um, Amboseli is accessed by Amboseli Airstrip. We do have scheduled flights uh, that go there, departing from Wilson Airport. Um, we have charter flights as well. We do road transfers from Nairobi, which is about a four or five hour game drive. It's important to note that we promote flying safaris. Basically, the Mombasa Road, which is used to access these four ecosystems, it, the four national parks, is one of the busiest roads in Africa. So we choose to fly our guests rather than drive them. The activities available um, in Amboseli, which would be in the conservancies bordering Amboseli, is day and evening game drives, guided bushwalks, sundowners, bush meals, cultural community visits, which is visits to Maasai villages. And also incredible research has been done in Amboseli by the Amboseli Trust for Elephants by Cynthia Moss. And you can visit their research, and research center and discover everything about the big tuskers of the area. Uh, I would say uh, Amsteli is best for elephant viewing, photographers, and birders. Accommodation in Amsteli, we have luxury to mid-level properties, so Elowana Tortoise Camp, Satao so LRI. Mid-level property would be Amsteli Porini Camp, and that is a tented camp. Um, as I said, there are important notes that wildlife spreads during the rains, um, but it is a beautiful area year-round. Moving on to Chulu Hills. This uh, national park sits between Abaseli and Savo West. Uh, the Chulu Hills are the youngest volcanic range in Kenya, and the landscape is very, very beautiful, and it provides a stark contrast to many areas in Kenya with rolling green volcanic hills and sensational Kilimanjaro views. Within the national park, the northern slopes are very unvisited. Um, sadly, they're not managed very well, but the southern slopes, are beautiful and home to numerous lodges. They are home to elephants, buffalo, leopard, giraffe, elands, and numerous plains game. And they are mainly comprised of numerous conservancies and group ranches in partnership with the Maasai communities. So that all of the accommodation that we use in Chulu Hills 
is on group branches. So it's not actually in the national park, although visits to the national park are included mainly in the trips. Um, there are no natural water sources in the Chulu Hills, so the lodges recycle their grey water to feed water holes to attract uh, the wildlife. So game viewing can be very good just from your lodge, basically. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, the access to the Chulu Hills is on Aldonio Airstrip, again, schedule and charter flights and the same road transfer from Nairobi. Um, Chulu Hills is uh, it's basically a safari adventurer's dream because you get to go out on walks, you get night drives, hiking, horse riding, mountain biking, fly camping where you sleep outside in the wilderness with a mosquito net separating you from um, the wildlife, which is amazing. Obviously, you're, you're secure still, but it's a, it's a wonderful experience sleeping out under the stars. You can also go on scenic Kilimanjaro flights and the lodges also have wildlife hides. Um, as you can see in this top photo, we're next to the water holes. So you can sit and enjoy a lovely lunch and the wildlife comes to you. So Chulu Hills basically is adventurers and active safari goers and also photographers. Accommodation, we have luxury accommodation, which is Great Plains, Old Donyo Lodge, which is sensational. And, and then mid-range is Campi Akanzi. It is important to note that game viewing can be limited, so it would be for active enthusiasts, so not your um, not your safari goers that are looking for big game viewing constantly. Moving on to Savo West and Savo East, it is two. They are two separate na national parks. Um, they are separated. They are one main ecosystem, but they're separated by the what is now the Mombasa Road, which was originally the famous railway linking Mombasa to Nairobi and onto Uganda. Which is, of course, I don't know how many of you know this, but it's the story behind the famous Man Eaters of Savo, where a coalition of maneless male lions wreaked havoc and killed between a dozen and over a hundred members of the team. So that's a little interesting fact. Uh, Savo West is a national park, which is 9,000 kilometers square. It has an incredible diverse uh, landscapes from natural springs, rocky ridges and black lava flows to rolling grasslands and acacia woodlands. It's home to lion, cheetah, leopard, buffalo, elephant, giraffe and numerous plains game, as well as incredible bird life. Uh, with the bird life is especially prominent on Lake Jipe, which is on the border with Kenya and Tanzania, and you can go on day excursions there whilst staying in Savo West. Access is the Finch Hatton's airstrip, again scheduled and charter flights, and then a little bit longer road transfer from Nairobi between five to six hours. Um, day game drives, bush walks, bush breakfasts, uh, they have sensational yoga and fitness training um, facilities in Savu West, uh, spas, they've got great children activities as well, so I would promote this area for families that want to go together, and then also day excursions to Mzima Springs, which is a natural spring. You can see lots of hippo and crocodile. Lake Jupe, as I mentioned, on the border with Tanzania, has a, sen a sensational bird life. The Shaitani lava flows, um, which is a beautiful la black lava flow in Savo West, and then also day trips into the Chulu Hills. As I said, it's best for families, photographers, and then also history and geology enthusiasts. Accommodation here. Um, we have a luxury camp there that we promote called Finch Hatton's Luxury Tented Camp. Mid to low range options are available, however, they're more on the low range side of accommodation, so we do tend to prefer to book people into Finch Hatton's. Um, it's important to note that in Savo West, the bush can be thick in the west of the park, and therefore game viewing can be quite limited. Um, there is no accommodation in the east and south towards the Tanzanian border. Moving on to Savo East, it's Kenya's largest national park. Uh, it's <laughs> large. It's 14,000 kilometers square. The park attracts wildlife um, to the permanent Boy and Hathi Galana rivers. And it also has incredible views of the 300 kilometer long Yata Plateau, which is the longest lava flow in the world. Uh, due to its size, the wildlife can be hard to spot in the park. However, it is home to a healthy lion and wild dog pop 
wild, wild dog were prominent in Lake Hippia. However, they have now ch showed up in, in large numbers in Savo East as well. So it provides a lovely opportunity to spend a lot of time with these amazing animals. Savo East is also home to the super tuskers, which are incredible, incredible elephants that have tusks that weigh in excess of 50 kilos per tusk. Um, the Yatta Plateau splits the Savo East to the north, with the only accommodation available to the north of the plateau being the sheltered wildlife trusts at Thumbuk. Access to Savo East can be quite limited as there are no scheduled flights to the park. However, there are charter flights and each accommodation has their own airstrip or one nearby that can be utilized. Again, the road transfer is five to six hours. As this is a national park, activities are quite limited within it. So it's just game drives, bush picnics. You can set up lovely picnics on, on the river. They've got lovely picnic spots. Uh, the excursions, you go to Lugard Falls, which is the photo you see in the top left. It's stunning waterfalls um, in the riverbed. Obviously, in the rainy season, this is quite limited as it floods, but during the drier months, it's beautiful. And there's also the Sheldrick Wildlife Stockades, but important to note that those are for guests of the Sheldrick properties only. And um, the Savo Trust, which does incredible conservation work within the Savo ecosystem, uh, keeping the super tuskers alive and you can visit their headquarters and they do incredible work that you can go and, and look at and they can take you to go and look at the super tuskers and you can even fly in the super cub and go and spot the tuskers from the air important to note that this does come with a donation to the Savo trust in order to to do those activities um Savo east i'd say it's best for safari enthusiasts i wouldn't send first time safari goers or people that want to spot constant game it can be hard work but it is absolutely stunning and it is one of my favorite parks in kenya it's also good for photographers it has fantastic bird life and again as i mentioned Savo trust uh, conservation works so anyone that's interested in conservation i would recommend it uh, accommodation in Savo east is there are a few low range properties that are available. We tend not to use those, but they are there if you need them. Um, but we have, there are numerous luxury exclusive use properties. One of my favorite is a private luxury mobile tented camp, which is set up in a very exclusive location along the river for you. And it, it is a tented camp, but you have every amenity that you could possibly need and it's very private. There are also the Sheldrick properties, um, which are self-catering, but we do offer packages that uh, provide everything for you. We send a food down, chefs down, <laughs> safari vehicles. So it is basically like staying in a lodge. And also these are the properties that allow you access to the wildlife stockades, which are the, David, the Daphne Sheldrick um, orphanage, which is in Nairobi that everyone visits to see the orphans. Once these orphans have reached five years of age, they're taken down to Savo and they are rehabilitated um, there and released into the wild eventually. So in the mornings and the evenings, guests of these properties can go and, and see the elephants all coming in from the wild to drink milk with their handlers. As I mentioned, um, wildlife can be hard to spot in Savo East, so it is for proper safari goers. And the use of charter flights and exclusive accommodation can result in quite a high safari cost for Savo East, but it is definitely worth it. Any questions? Thanks so much, Kath. Um, if you guys have any questions, please type those through on the GoToWebinar control panel. I wanna make sure that we can answer some of those and also send um, some of these questions that I might not know the answer to um, over to Kath. So a few questions that I got. Um, a lot of you are asking about other areas um, in Kenya and Tanzania, which is great that you bring that up. We are actually doing a whole webinar series. So again, if you head over to the Emerging Destinations website under News and Learn, you can click on webinars. So you can sign up for our future webinars that I'll be doing with Kath that will feature um, the Laikipia and Lewa region of Kenya. 
We'll also focus on Samburu, uh, the Maasai Mara, and then we'll also do a uh, Northern Tanzania circuit overview. So we'll be do doing those over the next few months and weeks. Um, so again, head over to the Emerging Destinations website under News and Learn, the webinar section. Um, a few other questions that I have, um, photos for your use. Um, during, after this webinar, I'll send you a follow-up again with the recording. Um, so if you joined in late, no worries, I'll be sending you the recording as well as a digital information pack uh, with tons of information with pictures that you can use for your social media um, or for your future guests that are looking at um, traveling to Kenya. Um, a lot of people asking about the current situation with um, COVID-19. Um, I'll also send you a link to the updated news for Kelly and Peacock. We're of course um, constantly updating and um, being super flexible with booking conditions and our terms and conditions and stuff like that. So of course I will keep you um, updated on all of that and send that to you digitally. Um, so my goodness, a lot of questions are coming in through now. I don't want to keep you guys too long. What I'm going to do is um, work with Kath and get you all a big um, Q&A sheet, for lack of a better term. So I'll send you guys all the questions that were asked during this webinar with the answers to them, because I think that would be helpful um, for everyone that was on. So again, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. Go register for our future webinars with CAF or other Emerging Destinations products um, over on the Emerging Destinations website. And um, stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks so much for joining us, you guys. Have a good rest of your week.